Good morning, everyone. Today is day one in our start of preparation for this harvest season. The first step in this journey is to get the combines out of the barn. Jeff just pulled the three 9460Rs out of the way. That way we can get this beast of a combine backed out of this barn, take it down to our white shed, hook up to one of our corn heads and start doing a little bit of maintenance work and getting it ready to get out to the fields. Before we get too far ahead, don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to get to 5,000. I'm gonna to put together a fall harvest and tillage equipment tour. I know you guys would love to see that, so hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoy it. Let's get to work. Was good. Back in the office. It'd be a lot easier if I fold this thing in. First start of the season. Mom, who's in the same boat and needs a babysitter and trade off. Don't need that quite yet. We'll start. Oh, hydrostat was not neutral. Perfect. Take it nice and easy on this beast out of hibernation. I gotta get by the other combine unloading auger and then cut it hard enough that I get the back of my unloading auger past the door. I got Jeff back there spotted for me a little bit. There she is. Cut her around. Nice and snug, just the way we like her. I do have a reverse camera here. Yeah, look at that. Should be standard technology on any vehicle, combine, tractor, pickup truck. Full speed. Let's roll. A little parade right there. If you want a first hand demonstration of some real zero to 60 capabilities, this is your girl. Oh. The old 670 tops out at 22 and a half, 23 miles an hour. We're wanting to work on the front corn head first, so I'm going to pick this one up and move it out of the way. Just got the hard job moving the stock stompers. Okay, now we're gonna hook up the PTOs. Never hurts to have a little bit of lube. Oh, sure. We're gonna pop open the top on her. You're required to open up the top before you can turn on the separator. And you have to turn on the separator before you can turn on the head. We're gonna start her up, get the raccoons out of the combine. This is what a combine operator sees all day. While we're waiting on the boss to get back with some parts for the corn head, let's talk about the intricacies of this header attachment right here. The corn head plays a very important role to increasing the efficiency of corn harvest. We want to have the least quantity possible of corn stalks running through the machine. Those corn stalks are very thick and rigid and take a lot of energy to be broken down by the separator. That's where the corn head comes in. It specializes in pulling those ears off of the stalk and just sending ears through the combine. That way the internal part of the combine only has to focus on getting those kernels off the cob. The first stop on the corn head is the snout. It solely acts as a row divider. Since you can cut soybeans whatever direction you want because of the way we harvest them. However, corn has to be picked in a row. That's why we have the snouts to make sure that each row goes to its individual side. Once the corn plant gets a little bit further up into the head, a few different things go on. Here is the snout down view of what is going on in between the rows. And over here is a view of what those rows look like with the snouts up. As the combine goes through the corn, the corn stalks are brought into the gathering chain right here. The gathering chains pull the corn stalk and ears up towards the auger in the middle. Right after they make contact with the gathering chains, they meet the deck plates and the snap and rolls. The deck plates serve as a landing zone for the ears as the corn stalk are pulled through the gap in the deck plates. The snap and rolls, which are located directly underneath the deck plates, 
grab the corn stalk and pull it downward towards the ground. That downward motion in combination with the deck plates results in the ears being stripped and the gathering chain then brings the ears all the way up to the center auger. The operator of the combine continuously has to pay attention to the width of the deck plates. As the corn stalks differ in size and the ears differ in size, you need to readjust these. That way you're making sure that the maximum amount of ears and kernels are making it up to the combine. Once the ears find themselves all the way up to the main deck of the combine, the auger just exists to move them to the middle. After the ears have taken their ride on the auger to the center of the combine, they're gathered into the feeder house and sent through the combine for processing. I brought a corn plant for reference. All right, here's my demonstration of how it works. The corn plant comes through. Oh, there we go. I'm not near as strong as the corn head. Pulls the plant through and the ear is left on there. The ear finds its way up there. Auger takes it in, goes through the combine. All of that sounds relatively simple individually, but when you put all that together, these combines have to be very efficient and reliable at that harvesting process because we do harvest thousands and thousands of plants per minute. As we're going through the field, these are continuously pulling plants down, bringing ears in. It is that process of stripping the ears from the plant that allows these combines to be so efficient at processing corn. This is an eight row corn head on 30 inch spacing, meaning it's only harvesting 20 foot at a time. There's farmers out here who are operating 12 row corn heads, which would be 30 foot wide, and 16 row corn heads, which would be 40 foot wide. They can harvest a lot of grain, but they're also using a bigger combine than this. This is an S670. I believe it only has a nine liter PowerTech engine under the hood. Really not that much power. That'd be the same amount of horsepower offering that our 8R tractors would have. They make an 80 and a 90 series size of the same combine, which would use a 13 and a half liter engine. A lot more of a beast of a combine. If you put an eight row head on something like that, you'd be driving eight, nine miles an hour through the field. Even this 670 is actually too much of a combine for an eight row corn head. This thing will probably be picking, even in good corn, five to six miles an hour, which is pretty swift speed out in the field. My tool truck. You want to put this one back in? No. Those are all okay. The only thing that really stinks about working on the corn heads after having them away all winter is you don't exactly know what parts are going to be needing replaced or what's broken or what's just worn out over time. So the process involves a lot of trips back and forth to town and to our other storage shed where we keep our parts. That way we can get this corn head ready to pick some 300 bushel corn. Let's locate this part. Wow, that's dusty. First guess. Yeah, I'm good. My question is, is why is the gathering chain even over here? Someone gonna steal it? If you want this gathering chain that bad, you could probably just have it. Okay, those nine R's parked in a row like that look sick. That's what I get for saying something. We gotta go wash that off while dad's getting some parts. We gotta get this thing unhooked because it will be on one of our big 13 inch bin loading augers. I think we should throw a coat of wax on these four wheel drive tractors. Make them nice and pretty before we hook them up to some iron. Which one are you picking? This one or that one? That one's got a lot of power and it can pull some big implements. But man, this thing's versatile little thing. And it's kind of fun to drive around. Although we do have a backup of that one and then a backup for the backup. So I'll probably lean that way. It's almost easier to put them up than pull them off. It's not gonna start. Gotta get the fire extinguishers out of winter storage. Hopefully we do not need this. Let me get my lifting in today with these stock stompers. 
We will have the corn heads resting here when they're done being worked on. That was the easy one. It's only 74 foot long. This one is going to be a little bit more of a challenge, I bet. See, we got a 74 foot long auger. And this barn is only 120 foot long. You can imagine Getting it out the side door is a bit of a challenge. A little bit more complicated. how much room we have in here now. Those augers literally take up like a quarter of the barn. At some point we'll crack these things open and grease them up, oil them up as well. The nice thing about farming in central Illinois is that Deer's dealership infrastructure here is so robust. We're five minutes from our nearest Deer dealership and there's probably one within maybe 15 miles either direction of this one. The best part is we've been working with the shop foreman there for a long time. He lets us borrow his tools. Obviously, if we break it, we buy it. Whoa, what is that? What do you think I gotta do to get my hands on this piece for a day? I'm certainly not an MN millennial farmer, but I am a millennial, born in 96. The last of the millennials. That thing is sweet. That rear end's even better. This got a nasty standstill. Be a hell of a grain cart tractor. Give me the drill back. We'll have John Deere come out and see if they can do it. You guys ever work on a project at work that really shouldn't have taken you a long time, but a lot of unfortunate events occur? It ends up taking you significantly longer than you penciled that into your schedule at? Well, that's how this corn head's going for us. And the worst part is, is we didn't even get it fixed. snout over there. It knows its days are numbered. Hopefully it's still here tomorrow when we come to work on it. I think down tightens it. Okay. Last stop for the corn head before it hits the field is oiling up the chains. This corn head had a lot more maintenance to be done to it than the other one, but we got it done in probably a tenth of the time. Just because we had that one thing going wrong on that other corn head that ended up taking us all day. Keep these chains nice and lubricated. I didn't quite get this first one over far enough to have room for both of them to be out of each other's way, so I'm gonna move this one over. Work 
working on the draper next, but someone pulled it in here with the connection side facing the silos. The worst part is it was dad. We're gonna take that corn head to town so they can work on it. A little bit easier than they can out here. But we don't have head carts for the corn heads, like I said. So we're gonna have to leave one of our drapers on the ground. He's impatiently waiting on me. We've had this old 15 foot drill in the barn here for probably 10 plus years at this point. It hasn't seen the light of day in a long time, but I'd like to get it out and plant some rye with it. We're about to do a big overhaul on the cutting section of these drapers. Probably take all afternoon, if not into tomorrow, to do so. All of these sickles on the bottom and the guards get worn out over time. There's actually a bar holding them all on, and every now and then it's good to replace that bar. That way you're not snapping your bar when you're out cutting. Cornhead's gonna go to town a little bit. They're gonna put it under the knife, get it back in working condition, and then they're gonna bring back those big 15 feet sickle sections for the drapers. And I'm gonna go find some food. Tell me if these are ever point if they're pointed straight out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Tell me that, I'm gonna stop. Just a hair, not much. Whoa, that's pretty good. This is what one half of the cutting bar looks like on our 30 foot flex draper. We're trying to get this bolt loosened off here on the end that holds this little shaft that attaches back into the motor there that runs that half of the thing. It's a dual motor drive, so there's actually two 15 foot sections on both sides. It's nice having dual motor drive, that way when you're cutting perpendicular to the rows or something, you got a large load across it, you're not breaking your bars all the time and running out of power with not having more than one motor. The draper here's job is much simpler than the corn heads. It only has to cut the beans off at the ground, much like a lawnmower. The sickles in combination with the guards right in front of them, cut side to side, pinch those bean stalks in there, and then pull them over with speed and gravity into the draper. Draper feeds them into the middle, and then it goes up into the combine. The entire bean plant's processed, as opposed to corn where we just process the ears. These are the meat and potatoes of the header system here we use to cut beans. The nicest upgrade that's come to farming in the last 10 to 15 years is the Draper system. Draper is really the terminology for these belts that feed the grain to the middle. We used to have systems with augers across, and it was just flat metal. These belts allow it to feed more efficiently, less violently, so you're losing less beans all over. It's constantly feeding them to the middle, there's no piles coming across. The augers are notorious for causing piles, whereas the drapers are consistent all the way across the board. I mean, that is the biggest selling point to this style of platform. And a lot of farmers over the last few years have switched to them. It's one of those investments that's really paid off in terms of productivity and reliability. Some farmers do still run the auger style platforms. They just like them. These drapers are a little bit more of an investment financially. I mean, if you have the acres to justify them, I think most farmers go ahead and get them. This is a 30. It's not really that big of one, but we run two combines. So it kind of makes up for it. They make a 50 foot draper for the X9 combines. Out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, keep going. That's what I was saying. Get closer to it. That's perfect. Now try. Perfect. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you gotta go back an inch. inch and a half. Okay, uh, now go. The one nice thing about having two of these is that when one of them's under the knife, you can go inspect the other one to see exactly how it goes back together. Oh, 
Oh man, long day of turning wrenches out in the heat. It's got me sweaty and tired. This draper right here is almost done. We've got both sides of the cutter bar have been replaced. So it's got all new sickles. We replaced a few guards where they were necessary. It's assembled back together. It appears that everything went back together correctly. Time will tell, but it looks to be running smooth. All we have to do on this one now is check all the gearboxes around it. I think there's three or four different gearboxes across this thing that are sealed. Just check and make sure it's got plenty of oil. Then we're going to hook up to that one, replace the cutter bars on it as well. Guards too, check the gearboxes, and then it'll be ready to run as well. We've got to put together the other two cutter bars, take the old ones out, slide the new ones in, and they'll be ready to rock and roll. We're not really that far off from bean harvest. I give it two and a half to three weeks. But that's all for today. See you guys tomorrow. Oh, our corn head is already back from the shop. Isn't that convenient? I figured we wouldn't get it back for a couple weeks, but we got it back in less than five hours. Let's see what they did to it. Okay, so there was what was giving us an issue right there. Looks like they tapped it out and put a three quarter of an inch drain plug in there. That'll do. The only issue with that is that when we check it next season, it won't have a dipstick in it. So we'll have to find one next to it, maybe in that row and just stick that dipstick in there and check and see if it has enough oil. We need to kick this one off the head cart. That way we can put the draper back on. I got home from work last night and I was like, what is in my pocket? The long extension for the ratchet. I don't know how that made it home with me without me noticing. This corn was planted really early out here. 108 day day length corn. Should be getting relatively close to physiological maturity, which is also R6, the sixth reproductive stage that they chart for development. Once it hits R6, it's done with its life cycle. At that point, all the corn is doing is drying down. It's not accumulating any more dry matter within the kernels. It basically just hits the end of its life cycle, dies from natural causes or just stops growing, and we wait for this to dry down. We'll look at this ear real quick. Pretty good ear. We're still technically in R5, which is dented kernels. The milk line has progressed pretty far down to the tip of the kernel, but it's not there yet. When it reaches R6 or physiological maturity, depending on conditions and hybrid, you're looking at 30 to 40% moisture. We won't harvest until probably 16, 17, 18%. We're not really in that much of a hurry, and we also don't want to pay those natural gas propane bills to dry this corn down. When it's 90 degrees outside like it is this week, and I think the temperatures are gonna stay warm for the next couple weeks, this corn will dry down really fast. It's a good thing we do have the combines ready because it's not gonna to be too long before we're out here picking this corn. I give it two to three weeks. on partially now go forward 
Well, we had a bolt seized up on the cutter bar, and then we rounded it off. So we're taking an express trip over to the fire range. Very few things are as effective at their job on our farm as the old settling torch. When you take something to it, it's either getting fixed or replaced. That's the, there's only two outcomes. Cutter bar's loose, time to replace another one. Nothing little heat can't fix. Operational check on this one. That one's running like a champ. Always looks kind of cool when you unhook them at the ground like that. That's good to go. Either the combine side of the connector is leaking or the draper side of it's leaking. The only way really to tell is to run them both and see where the oil is coming out of. I don't know though, I'm not seeing it right now. Draper belts, other sickle sections, and there they will rest until the farm sells probably. This will be at the final state sale. The second to last thing I gotta do with the combine to have it fuel ready is to put the grain tank plug at the bottom back in that way when it starts to fill up it isn't just raining corn out of the bottom. But don't we all? The combine and the 8R tractors are the only two machines on our farm that share auto steer systems. The 9460Rs all three see action in the spring and in the fall. That means they need to have their own Starfire, Green Star, GPS system, John Deere's GPS system, whatever you want to call it. These 8R front wheel assist tractors though do not do any kind of work in the fall. A few years ago the 8310R was a grain cart tractor. We opted though to install a power takeoff on one of our 9460Rs because even that 1100 bushel grain cart fully loaded with corn was a challenge for the 310R to pull through the fields, especially in wet conditions. Those 9460Rs, which it was not wet last harvest, but I think that they would do a lot better in the mud. Starfire 6000 with an RTK radio receiver. I thought it was going to be cooler in the barn than it is outside, but I was definitely wrong. It's a lot cooler here in the breeze than the stagnant hot air in the tractor. It's in and it's powered up. We'll put our ladder up a little bit and go outside and install the dome. Makes me uneasy having this thing. It's like carrying around the crown jewel. Snapped into place. Isn't that neat? See you later, world. Can't accidentally scrape that off on the top of the barn later. We're about to pull this S670 back in the machine shed. Both of those drapers are ready to harvest, but both corn heads are good to go except for one needs some oil. I'm gonna put one of these four-wheel drives back in where the combine was originally. And I think I'm gonna pull the combine straight in here. The combines are easy to pull in and out, but they're hard to turn in and out. Like when we do that, because you have to watch for the augers hitting the doors. Well, I was wrong if you couldn't tell. Happens every now and then. Dad wanted to put this back over here on the north wall. That way it was out of the way, because we will have to get the four-wheel drives out again. Get the ripper out, get the boat foot sail out. We're in the short rows for the to-do list for the combine, so gotta put on that grain tank plug and then put the Green Star system in. And this one will be ready to harvest as well. We have them serviced in the winter, so everything's greased up. All the moving parts are supposedly in the right condition or have been replaced. 
Can't quite see it. Okay, perfect. Where do you rest your flashlight so you don't have to hold it in your mouth? No, that's not it. Money. Do I have to say it again? 5,000 subscribers, equipment tour. That's a good deal. This is a very good deal out here. A little bit more rustic on the inside than the S-Series Combine, but it does a great job. One thing I'm concerned about, AC. Every piece of equipment stored in this barn right now is just stagnant, 90 degree air, and I'm sweating bullets. Uh, right there. We have successful power. Last but not least, we're gonna raise the head up a little bit. Hopefully we don't get the barn door. We got a little too close for comfort. Well, I got up here to put that dome on and there's already a Starfire ITC dome on it. The reason it's on this combine, but you didn't see it on any of our other equipment, is because these domes are actually going extinct or they're just going to become archaic and deer is no longer going to support the technology that is in these or the satellites. Something to do with the satellites aren't going to be able to communicate with this because they're upgrading their firmware, their hardware. I think that's code for we just need to sell more domes. They still work for like rudimentary GPS mapping and SF1, but they may be expired at this point. Call dad. He said it'll do its job for another year mapping the field. So I'm gonna take this 6,000 back to the 285 where it came from. These are the newest generation of Starfire receivers. We have 3,000, which is just the previous rendition of the 6,000. And then that one on the combine, which is still gonna work this season is called an ITC. With those final touches we just put on that 9670 combine, that pretty much makes our combines both field ready at this point. All of our header equipment is ready to go. Like I said, one corn head we had to skip on the oiling to get something fixed. Other than that, we're pretty much ready to go on the harvesting equipment standpoint. We still have our grain handling equipment behind me, like this auger, our drive over pit. We have to service those. We'll have to hook up our medium sized utility tractors to these. That way we can lubricate the chains, grease the zerks on it, make sure everything's in working order. We have to hook up the auger wagon to the 9460R. One of these 9460Rs, I believe this one right here has a power takeoff on it. That way it can power the auger on the grain cart. So it'll be on grain cart duty all fall. And then when it's done with that, it'll hook up to the vertical till and start working some of our more erodible marginal farm ground. And then maybe some of our bean stocks. These two will be hooked up to disc rippers, chisel plows, whatever you want to call them. One of our chisel plows is tucked in the back of this barn. The nicer, newer ones over at the red barn. These will both be on chisel plow duty basically all fall. This will be a flex between the grain cart and the vertical till. If you want a really good equipment tour of all that, make sure you hit the like button on this video. Subscribe. My goal is 5,000. I'll put together the fall harvest and tillage equipment tour for you guys. I know you've already seen a lot, but I'll give a very detailed explanation of each piece of machinery and what its role is on the farm. Thanks for watching. We got a lot done today. If you had any questions about what we did, leave a comment below. Like I said, I love to talk about farming. So ask away about the equipment, the crops, anything on your mind, and I'll try to get a response to you in the comments below. Stay tuned though, because I'm going to make a video on every step of this process and how we get our farm ready for harvest and then how we we prepare our ground for next year. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.